What was that about the hat? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Something that happened with Miss Tesman this morning. She put her hat down on a chair, and I pretended to think it was the servants. My dear Mrs. Hedder, how could you do such a thing to that poor old lady? Oh. Sometimes a mood like that hits me, and I can't stop myself. Ah, I don't know how to explain it. You're not really happy, that's the answer. Why on earth should I be happy? Can you give me a reason? Yes. For one thing, you've got the home you've always wanted. You really believe that story? You mean it isn't true? Well, yes, it's partly true. Well? Well, it's true that I got Tesman to see me home from parties last summer. What a pity my home lay in another direction. Your interests lay in another direction, too. <laughs> That's naughty of you, Mrs. Hedder. <laughs> But to return to you and George. Well, we walked past this house one evening, and poor Tesman was fidgeting in his boots trying to find something to talk about. I felt sorry for the great scholar. Did you? Mm. Yes, honestly, I did. Well, in order to help him out of his misery, I happened to say quite frivolously how much I would love to live in this house. Was that all? That evening, yes. But afterwards? Yes. My little frivolity had its consequences. Our little frivolities do much too often, unfortunately. Thank you. <laughs> well, it was our mutual admiration for the late Prime Minister's house that brought George Tesman and me together on common ground. <laughs> so we got engaged and we got married and we went on honeymoon and... <laughs> oh, well, Judge. I've made my bed and I must lie in it, I was about mm. to say. How utterly fantastic. Then you never really cared in the least about the house? God knows I didn't. Yes, but now that we've furnished it so beautifully for you. Yeah. All the rooms smell of lavender and dried roses. But I suppose Auntie Juju brought that in. More likely the Prime Minister's widow rest herself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has the odour of death about it. It reminds me of the flowers one has worn at a ball the morning after. Oh, no, my dear judge, you have no idea how hideously bored I'm going to be out here. Trouble is, nothing really exciting has ever happened to you. Nothing serious, you mean? Put it like that, if you wish. But suppose you were to be faced with what people call, to use a conventional phrase, the most solemn of human responsibilities. A new responsibility, little Mrs. Heather. Oh, be quiet. Nothing like that's going to happen. <laughs> we'll talk about it again in a year's time, if not earlier. I have no leanings in that direction, Judge. I don't want any responsibilities. But surely you must feel some inclination to make use of that natural talent which every woman... Oh, be quiet, I say. <laughs> I often think there's only one thing for which I have any natural talent. And what is that, if I may make so bold as to ask? For boring myself to death? Now you know. <laughs> Talking of boring, here comes the professor. Now, 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 Mrs. Hedda. Hedda? Hmm? There hasn't been any message from Ireland. No. Well, then we can expect him here presently. You really think he'll come? Oh, no, sure he will. What you were saying about him this morning is just gossip. Oh. Yes, Aunt Juju says she doesn't believe he'd ever dare stand in my way again. Fancy that. <laughs> then everything in the garden is lovely. <laughs> And uh, we can keep her a company a little longer, shall we? Mm. And see if he turns up. What? And uh, if the worst comes to the worst, he can always sit here and talk to me. What do you mean by if the worst came to the worst? If he doesn't want to go with you and Tesman. Uh, Hedda, do, do you think that would be all right for him to stay here with you? Uh, remember, Auntie Juju isn't coming now. But Mrs. Elfstead is. So we can all three sit and have a cup of tea together. Yes, that would be all right. Mm. It's probably the best solution as far as he's concerned. Why? My dear Mrs. Tesman, you always say of my little bachelor party that they should only be attended by men of the strongest principles. But Mr. Loveborg is a man of principle now. You know what they say about a reformed sinner. Madam, there's a gentleman here who wants to see you. Oh, well, show him in. Yes, madam. I'm sure it's him. I do offence that. My dear, Ivers, how grand to see you again after all these years. Yeah, it's good of you to write, George. <coughs> well, may I shake hands with you too, Mrs. Tesman? 
delighted to see you, Mr. Loveborg. I don't know if you Judge two gentlemen... Brack. That's correct. We met some years ago. Now, you're to look on this house as though it were your own home, Hylet. Isn't that right, Hedda? I hear you've decided to settle down in town here again. Huh? Yes, I have. Yes, well, that's understandable. Oh, uh, by the way, I bought you a new book. <laughs> Though, to tell you the truth, I haven't found time to read it yet. You needn't bother. Oh, what? There's nothing much in it. <laughs> oh, I don't fancy hearing that from you. <laughs> but everyone's praising it. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. So I only wrote what I knew everyone would agree with. <laughs> Very sensible. Yes, but, uh, my dear Ireland. I, I want to try to re-establish myself. To begin again. At the beginning. Yes. Yes, well, I, uh, I, I suppose you do. Uh, thank you. But when this gets published, George Tesman, read it. This is my real book, the uh, one in which I've spoken with my own voice. Oh, really? What is it about? It's the sequel. Sequel? To what? To the other book. Uh, the, the one you've just brought out? Yes. But, my dear Alec, that covers the subject up to the present day. It does, but uh, this is about the future. Oh, I say the future, but we, we don't know anything about that. No. But there are one or two things that need to be said about it. Okay, have a look. <laughs> Well, surely that there solves your handwriting. No, I dictated it. It's in two parts. The first deals with the forces that will shape our civilization, and the, uh, the second uh, indicates the direction in which that uh, civilization may develop. Oh, how amazing. I'd never think of writing about anything like that. No, you wouldn't. Well, I brought it with me because I thought I might possibly read you a few pages this evening. Oh, how can... Oh, this evening, I, I'm not quite sure whether... Oh. Some other time, and there's no hurry. The fact is, Mr. Loberg, I'm giving a little dinner this evening. In Tesman's honour, you know. Oh, then I mustn't intrude. Uh, no, I... wait a minute. Won't you do me the honour of joining us? No, I can't. Thank you, sir. Oh, nonsense. Do. Please. There'll only be a few of us, and I can assure you we shall have some good sport as head, as Mrs. Tesman puts it. <laughs> no doubt. Nevertheless, I believe. You could bring your manuscript and read it to Tesman at my house. Hey, that's an idea. What? But, Tesman, Mr. Loberg doesn't want to go. I'm sure he'd much rather stay here and have supper with me. With you, Mrs. Tesman? And Mrs. Elfstead. She's coming out here this evening, so you see, you really must stay. Otherwise, she'll have no one to escort her home. That's true, yes. Well, uh, thank you, Mrs. Tesman. I'll stay then. I'll just tell the servant. Pilot. This new subject of yours, the um, future. Um, is that the one you're going to lecture about? Yes. Yes, uh, they, they told me down at the uh, bookshop uh, you're going to give a series of lectures here during the autumn. Yes, I am. Hope you don't mind, Tesman. Oh, good heavens, no. I quite understand it might queer your pitch a little. Well, I can't expect you to put them off for my sake. I'll wait till your appointment's been announced. You'll wait? But, but aren't you going to compete with me for the post? No. Oh. I only want to defeat you in the eyes of the world. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> but Auntie Georgie was right after all. <laughs> oh, I knew it, I knew it. Oh, Hedda, do you hear that? Isla doesn't want to stand in our way. Our. Oh, uh, leave me out of it, please. Ah, uh, won't you gentlemen go in and take a glass of cold punch? One to the road, yes, why not? A oh, splendid idea, absolutely splendid. Oh, I feel so relieved. <laughs> won't you have one too, Mr. Loveborg? Thank you, I'd rather not. But great heavens, man, cold punch isn't poison. Take my word for it. Not for everyone, perhaps. I'll stay here and keep Mr. Loveborg company while you drink. Oh, yes, Hedda, dear, would you? Mm -hmm. I have some <laughs> photographs I'd like to show you if you'd care to see them. 